Uh, back in January of last year, when I noticed it all starting, when the red eyes came out of the woods at me, that was just a surreal experience. I, I still, it's hard to believe, even though I've experienced it and it, and it still sounds hokey. But, but anyway, there's that rabbit hole. You can't quit thinking about it. Once you've seen it, you can't quit thinking about it. And every time you go down the road, you're constantly looking for something. Hi guys, welcome back to the 401 Files. It's an absolute pleasure, as I always say, to be joined by so many like-minded people. And boy, does it feel good to be back. It feels like a lifetime since I was last here in front of the camera talking to you guys about the subjects that we love. The UFOs, the extraterrestrials, the strange cryptids, and even the paranormal. I'm out here again on the North Yorkshire Moors, an area that I've operated in and explored for the last five years, an area that has numerous accounts from all walks of life of high strangeness. This is what we would call a hotspot here in the UK for strange phenomena. However, this exact place that I am now, this specific spot, is new to me um, and it's full of history. So the woods is all new. I've never ventured off into this area before. So I'm really excited for tonight, which will be um, I'm sure that a lot of you will be happy to know an overnight solo wild camp. Um, less than 200 meters away from where I am right now is a Roman settlement. So when I mentioned that this place holds a lot of history, I wasn't lying. Over 2,000 years of people have come into this area, settled at one point or another, and experienced strange things. Hopefully tonight I can be one of those many thousands of people and um, share my experience with you guys as well. Kick back, relax, and enjoy. So I think it's only fair to start off this video um, by clearing the elephant from the room and a lot of you people will want to know where I've been, what I've been up to and um, I know this because I receive a hell of a lot of messages. You guys are just the best. I receive tons of messages, inbox messages, people reaching out to me on social media asking where I am, if I'm okay, if I need anything and um, ultimately asking when I'll be back as well. Like a lot of you people, um, for a lot of you people, the 401 files has become a part of your routine, a part of your daily, your weekly routine, whatever it may be, catching up on old videos, checking into some of the, the community posts that I'm sharing. And um, I understand that, you know, me just drifting off the radar from time to time is not, it's not great. It's not great. And I wish I could control that, but it's not that easy. And um, I'm going to explain now as to why. So for any of you guys that have been here on the channel from the start or the early days, You'll have no doubt heard that um, I suffer with OCD intrusive thoughts. Now, when I say OCD, this isn't me cleaning my hands 200 times a day. It's not me cleaning the house every second. Um, my OCD comes in many different forms. Basically, one of the worst forms that it shows its ugly little head is by obsessing on my intrusive thoughts. Now, everyone suffers with intrusive thoughts. Everybody, to some degree. It could be something as silly as driving down the road and seeing a group of people walking on the path and just thinking to yourself, oh my God, I could just swerve off at any minute and hit those people. Um, that's an intrusive thought. It's a thought that just comes out of nowhere into your head. Sometimes they're a bit funny. Um, sometimes they're quite disturbing. But with me, it's that times 10. It's always very dark, very depressing um, and disturbing to the point that it turns my stomach as to why that thought would have come in my head. And with the OCD side of things, which is something that a lot of people don't have, um, I, I, I cling on to the thought. So I'll get, I'll get a negative thought into my head. It'll disturb me, it'll shake me to my core and I'll think, oh my God, why have I just thought that? That is so dark and horrible. That isn't who I am as a person. I can't believe I've just thought this. But then what happens is the OCD obsesses on the thought. And the more I think about it, the more I try and convince myself that maybe I am this person. Maybe I am a horrible person. Maybe that thought wasn't an intrusive one. Maybe it was my own thought. And what happens then is I get anxiety. And then I get depression. And then I start becoming a recluse. And it's just a vicious circle. Because the more... Because the more I... Um, the more I slip down this dark spiral, the more that the thoughts keep coming. 
it's almost like a double-edged sword and I'm only one person I'm only one guy sometimes I can't I can't battle all the demons I can't battle all all the thoughts that come at once and I do try I, my god like do I try but I've taken I've taken a lot of relief in speaking to trained professionals because for a long time a, a big part of my life I thought that was going crazy and I thought I can't speak to anybody about the thoughts that are in my head because I'll be locked away. I'm a, I'm a crazy person. And um, it was only when I started speaking to trained professionals that they made me realize how common this is. You know, it's not crazy. They actually even know what part of the brain it comes from, which helps people like me. Because when you're hearing people who understand this and they know why it's happening, it's a huge, it's a huge sense of relief. But it still doesn't make it any easier when it happens. That's, that's the only downside. Um, on top of that, they're also testing me for, um, this is a recent thing, for autism and bipolar disorder. So they think that I could be on the spectrum, but also think that I've maybe got bipolar as well. So um, yeah, I'm being tested for that at the minute, which to be honest, isn't a big deal to me. And, and I, know, I know that sounds really... Um, short-sighted narrow-minded but it's really not because if they come back and say okay you are autistic as we thought or you are bipolar as we thought that must mean that I've been pretty much bipolar and autistic my whole life and so to me in 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 terms of the way it would change my life I don't think it really would my biggest struggle is the OCD intrusive thoughts that is that is what paralyzes me the most um, but I'm getting there. You know, I've been here a million times over before. And I know that it passes, but sometimes when you're in that, that spiral, my God, does it take some convincing to believe those words. But, yeah, it does. It passes, and I'm back out here again now talking to you guys, which is where I thrive. It's where I feel most at home. And um, I'm just so pleased to be coming out the other side of it. It was... It was a long stint, a really long stint of, of horrible um, emotions and mental mind games with myself, but yeah, I seem to have come through the other side. So that's that. I'm glad that we've got that out of the way. Um, I just didn't think it would be right to come back, make my first video back after maybe a month or two and, and just jump straight in without explaining myself because a lot of you guys here are really loyal fans, loyal subscribers, and I think that you guys deserve that that explanation um so yeah that's where i've been and um that, that's what's been going on i just want to add as well really quickly to the point that i've just made about where i've been and what i've been up to there's something else as well that i've noticed and you're not going to believe this but <laughs> i kind of lost my edge like whenever i would think about coming out and doing a solo overnight camp something that i've always done something that's never really bothered me all of a sudden now has started bothering me like i'm not sure if it's just a passing phase or if it's because i'm getting older i'm not sure what that is but I, it's something that i've always done i've always got out on my own and spent countless even multiple day trips camping in the woods alone but just recently like say over the last month i'm not sure if this was um a side effect of the depression or anxiety but yeah really the thought of it the idea of coming out here on my own scared me and believe me i tried a few times i tried to come out and, and make maybe three or four videos all of which failed because i just didn't feel at home i didn't feel i felt on edge i felt weirded out which is not not something that has ever really bothered me before but yeah I don't, like i said i don't know if that's because i'm getting older or or i'm not sure i'm just guessing at this point but i thought i'd mention that you know, as with a lot of the places that I explore, throughout the day, it's a beautiful location. There's not really much here now that is giving me the heebie-jeebies. Like, there's nothing here giving me a bad vibe. The hair isn't standing up on the back of my neck for any reason. It's just genuinely a beautiful location. But as we all know here on the channel, these locations, these hotspots for strange phenomena, take on a different character altogether after nightfall. Now, I'm not suggesting that 
things can't happen and people can't have experiences here throughout the day because they can and in fact most of the things that come from this area most of the reports do happen throughout the day but I just feel like exploring and investigating in any location after nightfall makes the task that much easier because it eliminates straight away a lot of human and man-made things that we might hear or see after nightfall in this location, there should be really no real reason for anybody to be here other than me. All the dog walkers would have left. You know, there's no designated camping sites here. So um, for me, although, you know, it, it rises in creepiness tenfold after nightfall, it does make my task and my job a lot easier in some respects. In others, it makes it 10 times worse. For example, the fear factor goes through the roof. This thing was probably more than likely, you know, seven, seven and a half feet tall, big, big. Probably weighed 400 pounds. And it was big, I'm telling you, it was big, but it had backward legs like a dog on, the, on its back legs. But its fr front, well, I guess its front legs, it looked like a man's arms with just big claws on it. I mean, the claws were three inches long, you know, their self. And, uh, but uh, it had like big canine teeth and it looked just like a German Shepherd dog in the face. Big, only, only way bigger, way bigger. Had a body like a bodybuilder. Like, you know, you've seen pictures of old Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was in his prime. That's what it looked like, the upper body did. Now the lower body was real thin and real slim. Other than its legs, its legs were huge. You know, its its, it's legs were had evidently had run or whatever. But uh, they had all wondered, wondered what they wondered what it was. They were all trying to ask, ask them if they'd ever seen anything like this. Of course, game warden guys didn't know. The sheriff didn't know. You know, nobody knew what it was. We're only a few weeks out from Halloween, and um, I can already sense that change. A lot of you here on the channel, you'll be able to relate to this. There's something that happens. You know, the nights obviously do get darker much earlier, but it's something more than that. I can't explain what I'm trying to say, but I don't know. I can be driving down the road and it can be late evening and I can just think to myself, it's almost Halloween. And that is if I had no calendar, I had no sense of time or, you know, where the year was in relation to Halloween. I just know something changes about the season. Something changes about the days and the feel, the whole vibe on the run up to Halloween is very obvious. As you venture deeper into the woods, a sense of foreboding can often creep in. It's as if the trees themselves are all staring down at me with piercing eyes. Moss covered rocks and exposed roots serve as a stark reminder of the woods untamed nature. The scent of damp earth and decaying leaves fill the air invoking a sense of ancient wisdom and a connection to our forgotten past. Yet it is within these woods that our imaginations can run wild. Legends of mythical creatures, ghostly apparitions and hidden secrets permeate our thoughts and can often send us falling down that rabbit hole even further than ever before. So this is the embankment that I was talking about. You can see it more clearly now. Um, obviously built up ground on this side, comes down into this ditch and back up at this side. Now on the opposite side of this ditch would have been where the wall is and beyond the wall in this area would have been the, uh, the houses, the barracks, um, tool sheds, armories, things like that, sleeping quarters. And this square that you're looking at right now, like I said, is one of two or three in this area so this would have been a very very strong holding point with a lot of activity um, and a lot of muscle so yeah it's, it just blows the mind what i'm here for though is not the history as such it's the strange reports of people seeing things and in almost every case where there's been a Rom roman settlement there are hundreds of stories that follow people seeing legions still on, still out on patrol hearing the hustle and bustle, as I've already mentioned, 
and many other strange things. But why I love this, this concept, this idea that there is a Roman fort here on the Moors, is because we already know the stories outside of Romans that come here on the Moors, cryptids, UFOs, extraterrestrials, and other paranormal entities as well. This is just an added bonus. I think that this is where we'll perform most of tonight's investigation. And by investigation, what I mean is we'll get the EMF reader out and um, also the night binoculars as well, night vision binoculars. Here's something that I really want to chat to you guys about and I'd be interested to know what you think. So please, as I'm talking, comment below with your thoughts and opinions on this subject because there seems to be this weird added extra to the already strange phenomena that we know as the UFO phenomena. And the little added extra that is just as weird is the men in black. There are thousands of people that claim to have had a running with these strange people that seemingly dress indistinguishable from each other, usually in black suits, wearing black shades and black hats. And it seems to me like their, their sole purpose is to interrogate and traumatize UFO witnesses. And in some cases, the witnesses claim that the actual running with the men in black, the experience that they had with these weird people, was more creepy than the actual event that they encountered. So how strange is that? And the reason I'm talking about this is because during my two, maybe going on three years now of working on the documentary, I've had some really strange things happen. Things that have sat me back in my seat and thought, shit, like, was that Men in Black? Was that meant for me? Is that a message that I should maybe stop? and not pursue this any further. Now I know there's gonna be people watching this that think, Ben, come on, like, you're just a YouTube guy, you're not even a big YouTube guy at that, and um, you're definitely not rustling any feathers at the higher echelon of government, so please just chill with this. And I get what you're saying. I feel the same way as well. There is really no reason for anybody to be intervene intervening with anything that I'm doing or saying. But strange things have happened. They're really like weird things that I can't really get into right now because they will be appearing in the documentary. But yeah, I just want to know what you guys think on the Men in Black. What is this weird added extra to the already weird phenomena of UFOs that we know as the Men in Black? Who are they? Who do they work for? What is their sole purpose? And whose side are they on? You see, the way I see things is if these people are turning up at late in, late in like the dead of night to interrogate and traumatize UFO witnesses. And their sole purpose by, you know, what we're going off with that information it would be that they're trying to keep people quiet. That's like the government, right? The government are also trying to keep people quiet. So do they work for the government? Because then you hear other stories where people say that these people didn't seem entirely human. They had weird characteristics, like they had no eyebrows, no eyelashes, really pale skin, no hair whatsoever in, in some cases. So then we start thinking, okay, well maybe these weird people that turned up in the dead of night to strike the fear of God in you are aliens. And maybe they work in, they're working undercover for the government. There are so many questions like as to who these people are, what the hell their purpose is, and um, yeah, I'd just be interested to know what you guys think. So comment below, let me know what you think about the Men in Black. As you can see, it's really starting to um, become more darker and darker. And it's more noticeable now as well as we, um, as we roll out into these autumn and winter months. The daylight hours are becoming shorter and shorter. And uh, if I just pan off to the right here, you'll see that in the woods behind me, it gets darker even still. So I would say that less than 40 minutes from now, this place will be in complete darkness and um, I'll be able to walk out, which is just up here, into the center of where the Roman fort would have been. I'll pull out the EMF reader and the night vision binoculars and um, tonight's investigation will start, it will begin.
as with all all the times I'm out here on the moors by myself, there is an air of anticipation. Like the idea that tonight might be the night that I see something, capture something on camera. That is something that repeats itself over and over whenever you're out in these areas investigating. Because the exciting thing is, or the exciting part of that, that question is that it might be. Like, I don't know what the parameters are to create an encounter or a sighting of any kind, whether it be paranormal, um, UFO related, cryptid related. I just don't know what it is that triggers one person over another person to have a sighting. So when I'm saying to myself that tonight might be the night, it's exciting because it very well could be. Like, it could be tonight of all nights that changes my life like it has done many of many hundreds of people before me so then it begs the question why am I doing it like if, if it's going to change my life you know we can't always assume that it will be for the better when I spoke to Steve Mera a few years back um, who may I add will be on the documentary great guy full of knowledge full of wisdom Steve told me that a lot of people go out looking for these things. And you've got to be careful because you never know what you're going to get. Like, there's no menu. You can't just scroll down the menu and say, oh, I'll have a UFO sighting tonight and I want it to be a great one. You could have a UFO sighting and you might never want to leave your house ever again. You might not be able to sleep properly on a night. You might become a mute and not want to talk to anybody or open up to anyone about what you encountered. And I thought that that was a very great point, like a good, a good point that Steve made was that you have to be cautious because we don't know what we're dealing with. But it still doesn't stop me from getting excited. It still doesn't stop me from wanting to get out and, in, and investigate these things. Because at the end of the day, the end result is that we all leave this place, we all leave this planet. So why not leave it knowing a bit more than what we started out with? That's my idea. He hears an owl, he sees a creature, and he gets back to his truck. And it's cranked up, the radio's open, the, the doors are open, the lights are on, and he said it just really shook him up. And so he said he went back again a fourth time, and he had a period where he blanked out, and then he found himself in the truck, but it was he always heard a owl before this happened. So what I did, I referred him to a retired, I know a retired MUFON investigator, and he's handling now. And it's almost like an abduction type thing, but you had Bigfoot, you had lights, orbs, he talked about orbs, hearing the owl. And so it's really amazing, but it's just there's so many coincidences happen after that. keep looking in um i keep checking in with lily just to make sure that she's not picking up on anything and right now she doesn't seem like she's um alert she's um alert Someone shouting. What the hell is that? I can't work out if that's human sounds or animal sounds. It would be so cool to hear something of um, 
something of that era, something that I could um, identify as being out of place. For example, the sounds of wooden wheels of a horse cart or something like that. You know, that just wouldn't be something that you'd hear up here, especially with it being on grass. So if I heard that, that would definitely be out of place. The sounds of chain mail or horses um, would also be out of place. It's actually a lot darker than it's appearing on the camera. On the camera it looks quite light, so I think that the camera must be working overtime to expose me correctly. Whereas here in real life, it's, um, it's much, much darker. crazy to think that I'm kneeling down on the floor in the middle of a Roman fort. I almost would love to have some kind of technology that would rewind the clock so I could see me sitting here right now in the middle of this path as everybody around me is going around is going about their daily activities like Roman soldiers sharpening their weapons maybe practicing some kind of um, war strategies Horses pulling carts. It's mad, it really is. What the hell are these? Lily's alert. Don't get me wrong, she's got her head up, she's looking around still, so she's definitely not settled, but she doesn't seem like she's worried either, so that's good. I need to sit quite a way away from the phone just so that it doesn't trigger it. So right now I'm about four meters, three, three, four meters away from the camera. Hopefully you can still hear me. And um, I'm just gonna switch this on. Once I do, the lights will go straight up to red. That's nothing to worry about. It's just the EMF reader finding its, its level. Then it should drop back down to zero and anything after that is an accurate read is a reading of some kind okay turning on in three two one okay it seems like it's found its level so i will begin if there is any roman soldiers that were stationed in this barracks that served here for any length of time, that wishes to communicate, please step close to the device held in my hand. If that was you that stepped close to the device in my hand, could you please do this again? Was you a Roman soldier here? Make the lights on the device go up to indicate that you was. Was you stationed here as a Roman soldier? If there is any Roman soldiers or spirits on the other side that wish to communicate with me, please step close to the device held in my hand. If you was a Roman soldier and you was based in this location at any time, could you please step close to the device held in my hand? Is there anybody here in this location with me right now that 
wishes to communicate. This was a Roman fort many thousands of years ago. The fort has long gone. If you haven't gone and you're still in this area and wish to communicate, please step close to where I am now. I'm just going to give it a few more minutes. I don't think we've had any real readings on the EMF reader, but then we'll get the we'll get the night vision binoculars out and we'll head back into the wood line because this whole area, not just this barracks, will have had Roman activity in it. So, is there anybody here? Do you wish to communicate? Are you a male or a female? If you go up to red, we'll know you're a male. If you say green, that will mean you're a female. Do you wish to communicate? One flash for yes, two for no. Was you, was you based here? If you can make the lights go up to red, you can do that by stepping closer to the device that's held in my hand. Flash two for, for a female. Do you have a husband or a boyfriend or partner that was stationed here? Are you still there? Do you still wish to communicate? Guys, it won't be too much longer now before I'm climbing underneath the tarp and calling it a night. But what I want to talk to you now about is what I believe to be the most creepiest of all the phenomena. Whether it's true or not, it's still open for debate. But that is these reports that come forward from not just hunters, but other, individual, other individuals as well that claim to have seen something that resembles the predator running around in the wilderness. Now we have predators here on earth, we have sharks, we have wolves, tigers and lions that all exhibit predatory behaviour. But that predatory behaviour is based on their instincts for survival. Now imagine a humanoid predator that is running around in the wilderness, sharing the same environment as us, but using technologies that are way beyond our comprehension. 
That is a terrifying thing, whatever this is. If this is an ET, an undiscovered species, or whatever it may be, whatever this is that people are seeing, to me, it has to be the most terrifying of all the phenomena. And who knows, maybe the film, maybe the movies, Predator, were actually based on something way before its time. Maybe the government or these film creators have someone in the loop that knows about these things. But for me, that there, the Predator, the Glimmer Man, whatever you guys want to refer to it as, in my opinion, is the creepiest of all the phenomena. As a guy who spends a lot of time out here in the wilderness, often on my own, I can't think of anything more terrifying than a humanoid predator. It's terrifying. Sometimes people report that it lurks in the trees, jumping from one tree to another tree and they can just make it out. Some people say that they can see the background, the distant trees through the object. Others say that it almost appeared as though it was malfunctioning. One minute it would be this glimmer, this heat wave almost type character. And the next, it would look like it's starting to form a human figure. Whatever it is, you guys comment below and share your own experiences with anything that you've had similar to this. Until next time, guys, take it easy. Stay safe. Wherever you are in the world, look after yourselves. And if you are in a position to do so, then please do look after somebody else as well. Mental health, much like the supernatural, is a complex and fascinating aspect of our human experience. Both mental health and the supernatural often delve into realms that are not always easily understood or explained by conventional means. And just like the supernatural, Mental health can sometimes seem mysterious and elusive. It can take on many different forms, from the very subtle all the way up to something that's clearly more obvious. Mental health, like the supernatural, can also present us with uncharted territories hidden within our own minds. Furthermore, mental health, like the supernatural, can evoke a wide range of emotions within us. It can be both awe-inspiring and intimidating at the same time. Mental health also challenges us to explore the depths of our inner worlds and to confront aspects of ourselves that we may not always fully understand. Guys